elephants are incredible. Every part of an elephant is like a miracle. And then you've got this whole big synergy of all these various parts. One of my big fascinations with elephants and why I ended up studying ecology is because it's all about the cycle of life and the interconnectedness of the various components. To me, elephants actually embody that because, you know, they, though through their actions, there's so many animals that get affected. So also because they have such large spatial requirements, we also end up conserving a whole lot of other animals that we might not be thinking of when we conserve elephants. It's the intelligence of an elephant that really gets me every time. I mean, they are calculating, they are thinking, and they can manipulate uh, the bush in so many different ways. Um, are gentle creatures. You know, we often think about them as being destructive all the time because of their size and that, but they're incredibly gentle. And um, yeah, I think just spending time in an elephant's company, you feel enriched. In terms of their engineering ability, you know, they lower the top parts of the canopy to lower levels so that other ungulates can reach it, like kudu and impala when they browse in the dry season. And they also follow the nutrients, so they're actually track, tracking the nutrients in the plants. Just before a plant buds, it draws all those nutrients from the ground into the tops of the tree and then the elephants can sense that that's when the nutrients are moving up and down and then they'll bark strip the tree. Or just before the city species loses its leaves it takes all those nutrients down into the roots and that's also when an elephant will bark strip a tree. An elephant's such a strange looking creature if you think about them I and having that long nose that's sticking out in front and it really is just like an extra appendage. I mean they have um, there's probably 90,000 different muscles in their trunk that they're able to pick up a small little leaf or a flower and with that same trunk they're able to break a tree that you would need a TLB or something to break. So they've got incredible power. And the fact that they've got those massive ears that are there to basically cool them down, they act like radiators. A huge network of veins inside there and they flap them a lot. People often would say when an elephant flaps its ears, you know, it's getting aggressive. That's not, that's not the case. Very much epitomise the African bush. If you really spend time in the felt, walking away from roads, into the felt and to look at elephant impact, you'll see a very different picture. So that thorny cage that, that lands on a patch of earth becomes like a real micro habitat for grasses to grow up. The other ungulates can't access that grass because it's protected in this cage. And, and you'll see these amazing patches of grass all over the landscape where the rest of the landscape might be bare, especially during a drought year. So I think elephants are intelligent enough to actually bank grass for themselves because they can come back, flip that tree up and then just rake the grass in for themselves to eat. So to me, that's an amazing way of farming 
to their benefit. And then of course they are amazing mega fertilizing agents. They produce 150 kilograms of dung per day, which they're carrying against the gradient. It's a huge privilege to have elephants on the Salati. I think anyway, if you just look in Africa, how the numbers have declined over the last 10 to 20 years, it's been, it's actually quite, um, it's quite horrific. In the last 100 years, there's been about a 97% decline of elephants. Um, because they were about 10 million and they're down to around about 400,000 now. And in that same period, humans have increased by 387%. So we literally are competing directly for space, for resources. Slati is a closed system with a fence all the way around, uh, which means if we leave the elephants to continually grow in population, which they will, their population will just continually increase um, until it gets to a point where they've completely eaten all the food and then they'll crash. But obviously before then, we need to, we need to manage them. We need to intervene. You know, our reserve is large enough that we're actually not at a tipping point yet, but because of being a closed system, we have to apply management principles. And um, the, yeah, part of what we're doing obviously is immunocontraception. Contraception in terms of the ethical considerations is probably far more um, beneficial, especially if you're dealing with tourism in your reserve. We would like to just try and stabilise the population and stop it increasing. So one way we do, we, we've looked to do that is through immunocontraception, uh, which is contracepting all the females. Um, it's not a hormonal contraception, so it doesn't affect their behaviour. Uh, it simply just prevents them from getting pregnant. So on Salati, we like to keep a close eye on our elephants and monitor them. Uh, and to do that, we need to fit some tracking collars. Obviously, we need to, to dart them to put a collar on. So that's what we do. And we use a helicopter to chase away the rest of the herd. And then when we get the animal on the ground, we'll stabilize breathing and the vet will make sure everything's fine before we fit the collar, which is a big unit. So I need three strong guys to lift this tusk. Okay. And then we got to pull this branch this way. Right. One, two. Keep going, keep going, you're almost over. So being a volunteer on Salati, you will uh, get to work with elephants, whether that's indirectly through uh, looking at camera trap photos and building ID kits for some of the individuals, uh, or whether we're darting an elephant and you have to either want to count every breath through the trunk. But also we look at the effects of elephants as well. We look at the behavior uh, and, and what they are doing to the trees and the vegetation around them. We manage for biodiversity, which means we can't just focus on one species like the elephant. We have to look at how uh, each population of, uh, of species is changing and affecting their environment and working with each other and, and, and how they're affecting each other. And elephants can have a huge effect on a lot of other species. Uh, for example, uh, raptors, they need tall trees to nest in, like the knobthorn. Same with the vultures. And if elephants are left unmanaged and the population increases to, to a threshold that we can't sustain, they end up breaking all of these knobthorn trees and destroying the tall trees, which means then we lose our, our raptor biodiversity. It's all about perception. So a lot of people are perceiving what elephants are doing as damaging the landscape. But, you know, we don't live long enough to understand the cycles. There was one scientific paper that proved that the elephant cycle moving from closed savannah to open savannah is a 200 year cycle. So we're inclined to panic within our lifetime when we see elephants impacting on the vegetation. But I think it's really important to walk around in the felt and actually look at all the positive things that are coming out of elephants engineering the landscape. It's a wonderful privilege to be able to go on a game drive and see a breeding herd of elephants just doing what they do naturally. I mean, you can spend hours just being with them. I think by managing the way we are now, we'll be able to have them for many, many years to come and find solutions as we go along. I think just being part of the open system again would be fantastic because it'll, it'll help the, the elephants to have options. And I think at the moment, the elephants, they like Salati so much that we haven't even had them trying to get out. So they obviously enjoy what they've got here. And I think we just have to make it as comfortable and as natural for them, and then we can enjoy the bush along with them.
We need to prove to ourselves that we're not a totally de destructive species. And we need to keep these, these massive animals that, are, that teach us so much, just in terms of their requirements that are in competition with ours, that we have the tolerance within our hearts to actually let them coexist with us.